Hello again guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video we are headed off on another outing in the Aeroplane Heaven Supermarine Spitfire Mark 1. Some of you may not be aware but Aeroplane Heaven actually recently released an update to the sound package of the Mark 1, something which I think many of us felt was needed. We are currently on the ground at Carnarvon Airport which is just out to the southwest of northwestern Wales' Snowdonia region. It's a really stunning part of the world made up of mountains, lakes, valleys, some very spectacular scenery hopefully making for a really fun flight. As I mentioned already, we'll definitely get a feel for the revised sound set, both internally and externally, but ultimately as well, this is, as I say, just a good excuse to have some fun in the Spitfire. As always guys, I do hope you enjoy the video. If you do, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. Let's head for the cockpit of the Mark 1 and we'll get the aircraft fired up. So good morning and welcome to the cockpit of the Aeroplane Heaven Supermarine Spitfire once again. It is still pretty early morning here on the ground in Carnarvon and as I say we're going to take the aircraft up towards the Snowdonia Hills. We'll throw the Spitfire around a little bit just to get a feel for the new sound set. I have noticed there's a couple of texture improvements since we last flew the aircraft so quite interested to see how the new sound set pans out as well. Anyway running through our before start checks the magnetos are off, flaps are selected up and sure enough we are indicating up on both sides there. Wheel brakes are set on and we do have good brake pressure Fuel contents, we should have a fully fueled aircraft, and sure enough we do. Radiator, will set fully open. Flight controls. Our full free and in the correct sense, we'll close up the door. Still no sound associated there with the door, which is a little bit disappointing. Nonetheless, we are ready for the start, so the mags can go on. Starter mag is on. Fuel cocks are both on. Prop is set to fully fine. Throttle is cracked. Mixture is set to fully rich. We'll prime the engine five times. And there's five. We'll just lock that up again for now. Checking no one's in the vicinity of the prop. Looks to be all clear. Clear pop! And we'll engage the starter. So good start there on the Merlin. Looks like they've changed the start sounds now. There's no uh, cartridge starter sound, so a little bit more accurate there, which is good to see. Anyway, running through the after start checks, all pressure has come up. Looking good now there within limits. All temperatures rising as well. Looking for at least 15 degrees Celsius there, already coming up 330. We'll get rid of the starter mag and we'll get our ground crew to disconnect the accumulator trolley. We're actually going to carry out the run up in our present position as well. Since the ground crew are here presently they won't be down at the holding point of course. There's only a little bit of wind around so it's not really worth turning into wind so we'll just come straight back on the stick and come up to 2000 RPM. We'll do that nice and quickly just to make sure we don't overheat our Merlin engine. So it's 2000 RPM, we'll cut the right mag. And showing about 100 RPM drop there on the right, back to both. And cutting the left. Same on the left there, we'll go back to both. And just cycling the prop. And we'll do that once more. And everything looking good. Radiator temperature is already getting pretty high, up through 100 degrees. So coming straight back off the power once again. So we better make our way out to the runway pretty quickly here. We'll do that and I'll come back to you again once we are ready for the takeoff. So we are all set and ready to go here on runway 25, just carrying out our before takeoff checks. Elevator trim can go one unit nose down. Mixture is set fully rich, flaps once again are selected up. 
and indicating up. Engine temperatures and pressures look good, just checking the fuel quantities. Still looking good there, and on the flight controls. Everything is full and free. So, part brake off. Coming up on the throttle, we're looking for plus 5 psi on the boost for the takeoff. Aircraft's on the roll. And just using a little bit of brake initially just to get us straight on the runway. So, power is set. Temperatures and pressures looking good. And we're up. We'll tap the brakes. Gear can come up. Now we're just going to hang a left here. We'll follow the coastline out towards the south. We'll leave takeoff power until we've got our wings level heading southbound. come back to plus two on the boost. That radiator temperature is already getting pretty high there, around 105 degrees. And on the prop we want to come back to 2600 RPM. And there's 2600. Close up the canopy. So overall I would say it's not a drastic overhaul in terms of sounds, there's uh, definitely obviously been a change with the engine sound set, but there are still quite a lot of cockpit sounds I think could use a bit more work, for example the canopy and the door, there's some parts of the cockpit that still have a complete absence of sound and others which just are a little bit lacklustre, but again overall it's really nice to uh, see the aeroplane having have taken the feedback on board, and I do think for the most part the engine does sound better, we'll obviously get more of a feel for that once we start to throw it around in just a little bit. For those who may have forgotten before, it was really the uh, engine sound that was the main issue with the aircraft, particularly in a dive once the airspeed built up, you've got a very strange high-pitched note to the engine. Again, a really lovely time of the day to be flying in the sim, it's always nice to be in the sim early morning or late afternoon, we've still got the sun coming out up over the east there, over that rather beautiful elliptical wing. And behind us we've got the, uh, the town of Carnarvon, we've got uh, Bangor off in the distance. Mine just down there on the left, you'll probably notice a few of those as we go, there's plenty of mines dotted around the Welsh countryside. Obviously Wales known for its mining industry back in the day. And a rather nice lake down there on the right. So we'll just roll the aircraft slightly here just to get us back down towards ground level. That rad temp's pretty high there, up at around 110 degrees, but the aeroplane heaven Spitfire does seem to run pretty hot these days, and again, it's nice to see that the feedback was taken on board, it used to run rather too cold, but it's probably gone a touch far the other way now, I would say. It seems to quite happily sit at 110 degrees, and we're not all that high in the power setting. Beautiful scenery in this part of the world, though, and interestingly, I would say particularly crisp imagery as well. A little bit of a hill off there on the left, that looks natural as opposed to a uh, slag heap, I would say. I'm sure we'll find a few of those, though, again as we go. Anyway, so we're just going to have a bit of a play around in the mountains here, really, and get a feel for the sound set. That's one noticeable addition there, I would say. Again, I did feel previously the Spitfire was lacking a little bit in vitality, with no real sounds associated with any manoeuvring, which clearly we do now have, but I would say that the sounds are, again, a little bit off the market. Really just sounds like we've got something loose down the back there, rattling away. As I said, it's really good that Aeroplane Heaven have taken the feedback on board. There's just room for improvement still. I will say I think that's an improvement over having no sounds at all. Anyway, 
anyway, we'll track uh, around towards the northwest here. Again, really just following the contours of the hills. Well, pressure looking good. That rad temp's stuck pretty much now at 110 degrees. We've got the radiator fully open, so there's not really a whole lot more we can do there. A little bit blinded by the sun there as it comes up over the crest of the, uh, the mountains. But we'll be turning back out towards the uh, west momentarily. Or rather more towards the north. Little lakeside property off on the left. It's another lovely lake. Speed wise doing around uh, 280 miles an hour here as we come down through the hills. And again, don't need too many excuses to take the Spitfire out for a run, such good fun. Pull hard left here and we'll come back through the hills up between the two uh, ridges. Heading out back off the right wing is pretty much just going to take us straight back towards Carnarvon, which of course we'll be doing later on, but we'll save the flight a little bit more for now. Speed wise, just coming back through 200 miles an hour, we'll keep a good eye on the speed there with only 2 PSI on the boost, we haven't got an abundance of climb performance, although still plenty here I think to get us over the tops of the hills. So we'll crest the top of this hill, back through 140. So we're actually just going to inch our way over the top here. Nonetheless, the Spitfire handling it just fine, up through 140 miles an hour again. Rolling inverted, get the aircraft back down towards the ground. And again, it really does sound like we've got something loose down the back. I was hoping really for a little bit more of a groan as the uh, airframe was manoeuvred. I have heard it said it's not actually realistic that the aircraft groans under stress, at least for fast jets. I'm not sure whether or not that counts for vintage fighter aircraft. And I know it's a bit of a debatable topic whether or not it's good to have full-on realism or a little bit of additional sound just to increase the overall feedback that you get from the aircraft. Personally, I'm in the feedback camp. I'd rather have noises associated with the aircraft. For example, afterburners. I know that, or at least I gather that realistically it's actually not all that much audio from an afterburner when it kicks in, but for example, in DCS you have the option to have the afterburner either on or off in terms of sound and again, I would personally rather have the sound, have that associated feedback even if it's not realistic because of course in the sim you are lacking a lot of other areas where there would be feedback in terms of obviously uh, feel, for example, G-forces, vibration through the seat. But maybe that's just me. Anyway, again, I think it's uh, nice to see that Aeroplane Heaven have added a little bit more to the spit. So currently tracking, what's that, northwest? They're tracking away from Carnarvon for now. Again, just really spectacular scenery. I highly recommend coming and giving the uh, general area a go for yourself. Snowdonia really is a beautiful part of the world. Done quite a bit of hiking in it myself over the years. But nonetheless, even virtually, really stunning. And again, I think the imagery is particularly crisp in this particular part of the sim. Generally speaking, as I say, I think the manoeuvring sound additions are reasonable and the engine sound changes overall are better. I still don't quite get the feel I was hoping for from the spit. I was watching Dreams of Wings find the Aeroplane Heaven Chipmunk and I thought he put it quite well. The engine sounds to me, it's almost a little bit like you're listening to them through a wall or something. It's a little bit hard to actually feel immersed in the aircraft in that respect. But again, I do feel there has been an improvement, and for sure, 
the emission now of that whining sound in the dive is definitely a huge improvement. And as I mentioned on the ground, definitely been some texture improvements as well in the cockpit. So I would say, again, Aeroplane Heaven, it's great to see that they have taken some of the feedback on board and have improved the Spitfire overall. Still some changes that I personally would like to see, but uh, at the end of the day, of course, they do have other products to deal with as well. I'm really hoping as a result of the changes to the Spitfire, we're going to see a sound pack change as well for the Mustang. I know that was people's probably most contentious product when it came to the sound pack. And I think rightly so. Initially, I quite like the sounds on the Mustang, but having heard them a little bit more thereafter, I have to say it's pretty far off the mark. Not particularly pleasant to listen to. Anyway, we should just become overhead Bangor. And then we can follow the uh, inlet here back out towards Carnarvon. We'll try and spot Carnarvon Castle on the way past. Pretty sizable castle, pretty famous as well, actually. Carnarvon's a pretty popular tourist area. Many people come to see both the castle itself, also the area in general, but of course Snowdonia, as you've seen for yourselves, is a really spectacular part of the world and well worth visiting. So the rad temp hasn't budged there, really. We'll just check the fuel contents. Down to about 20 gallons in the top tank. And the bottom tank still looking good, as it should. The castle should be just off to the uh, northern edge of the airfield. You can see the inlet opens up again between us and the airfield. And uh, the castle's down there, just next to the marina, I gather. So we've got the town of Carnarvon off to our 11 o'clock and the airfield should be just off the nose out towards the coastline. I think what we'll do here, we'll make a couple of low passes over the castle and then we'll head home. So just checking on our fuel state. Got about 10 gallons there in the top tank. Bottom tank looking good. Temperatures and pressures are checked. The radiator is still fully open. And you might just about be able to make out the castle there. It's just out towards the south of the town itself. Just off to our 10 o'clock position. We'll start rolling in. Now yeah, we've got the marina there just coming up on the left wing. There's the castle, I'm sure you can see it much more clearly now. Again located just off the water. Presumably for defensive purposes. So I'll make a bit of a wing over here to bring us back down towards the castle itself. And you can see the airfield, you can see the windmills there, just on the coastline. So just coming off the right wing. We'll make one more pass just before we head home. I think we'll do a loop over the castle. Haven't done a single loop yet on the flight, seems a little bit of a travesty in the Spitfire. So one last look at that really beautiful sunrise, I guess one last look as well at uh, Snowdonia. We'll come up to plus four now on the boost. That radiator temperature seems to be pretty pegged at 110 degrees, so I don't think we're going to cause any harm coming further up on the power. And again, just making a bit of a wing over here to bring us back in towards Carnarvon. Speed coming up through 180 miles now, we'll aim to get up to around 300 as we commence the loop.
And there's 300, just waiting until we come atop the castle. And 320, back on the stick. Let's come over the top of the loop, we'll cut the power. And there's castle just down off the nose. Interestingly there, it looks like we've got maybe another hilltop fortification just out to the south. Anyway, coming through the top of the loop, we'll come back up to plus two on the boost. And just making the run straight back home. Again, you can see those windmills. And you might think they're a scenery error, but apparently not. They are true to life. Seems a little bit of a strange idea banging two fairly sizable wind turbines in the middle of an active airfield, but there you go. What we'll do here, we'll track inbound, we'll fly parallel to runway 25, we'll just make sure the runway is clear and see what the wind's doing again. And then we'll break off for a bit of a left hand downwind back onto runway 25 itself. So the runway does look to be visually clear. And looking at the windsock there, the wind is straight down the runway, so we'll break off to the left. We'll cut the power, bleed off some speed here in the turn. Now we'll just use the shoreline here of the water as a bit of a visual reference to put us on downwind. Keeping the circuit nice and tight, the brakes are checked and off. Undercarriage will hold, mixture is rich, fuel pump we don't have. Fuel quantity. Showing about five gallons there in the top tank now, bottom tank looks good, so fuel is sufficient. Bang light not required, flight instruments look good. Back through 200 miles now, so we'll open up the canopy. And we'll take the gear down. Harness is secure, we'll turn back inbound towards the field. Just going to hold the flaps for now, we can take those below 160 miles now, but there are a ton of drag in the Spitfire, so we'll leave those until we're nicely established here on final. And that speed is starting to creep up now, so we'll take the flaps down. We are a little bit high there as well on the Pappy. And you can see a ton of drag, so the speed bleeding right off. Flaps look good. So pitch can go full fine, undercarriage is down. Flaps are set, land clearance not required, and again the runway is clear. going to keep ourselves a little bit high on approach here just to help with the visibility and maintaining 100 miles an hour for now we'll bleed that off as we come over the threshold back to around 80 miles an hour so speed's good just starting the flare and back off the power holding the aircraft off let's touch down Back on the stick, flaps can come up. And onto the brakes. So I'll just continue down towards the end, we'll come off at uh, zero 02. And then take the left onto the main taxiway. So vacating left off at 02 and then left again to join onto the main taxiway. Now we're going to take the spit right back to where we started. As ever we'll just have to zigzag our way back along the main taxiway here. Just help a little bit with visibility. Anyway, flaps are up, radio is open, landing lights we didn't turn on, so they're still off. Good in terms of our, our landing checks. And as I say, we'll just come back into the apron here.
Looks like someone's actually stolen our parking spot, so we'll just have to manoeuvre in around him. We'll get ourselves at least clear of the main taxiway. And we'll just swing the aircraft around. Just using a little bit of brake as well here to tighten up the turn. Okay, so that should have us clear. Heartbrake can go on. And again, just coming back on the uh, engine power. So we'll pull the slow running cutout. Engine shutting down instantly there, which is always a little bit disappointing in the uh, spit there. It should take a little bit longer. We have a good shutdown though. Max can come off. As can the fuel cocks. Now we'll just do a quick run around the cockpit, make sure everything's off. So slow running cutout's been pulled. That's now back in. That should spring back automatically, I believe. Fuel cocks are off. Starter mag is off. Generator we can leave on. Nav lights are off. We'll just reset the trim there as well. Max are off, get the gear indicator light off. Radiator we'll leave open for now just to cool things down a little bit more, although the temperature's come right back there. We'll open up the door once again. And that's us for our quick outing in the Aeroplane Heaven Supermarine Spitfire. So there you go guys, I do hope you enjoyed our outing in the Aeroplane Heaven Supermarine Spitfire. I think I covered most of my thoughts during the flight itself. Certainly there has been some improvement, particularly internally, no longer having that whining sound at high speed. And I do think the engine sounds a little bit deeper, throatier, overall a little bit more realistic. I will say though, there's certainly still room for improvement. We discussed the engine sounds internally. I do think they still sound a little bit distant in some respects. And there are still quite a few areas in the cockpit that don't have any associated sounds. Externally, perhaps it's just me, but I thought the aircraft sounded really rather wonderful. It was a real pleasure looking at those external shots. For sure, it was nice to be back out in the Mark 1 once again. It's a really beautiful visual external model from Aeroplane Heaven. I really enjoyed the flight and the region, and again, I highly recommend checking out Snowdonia for yourselves. Once again, guys, I do hope you enjoyed the flight. If you did, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. As ever, a very big thank you to my channel members and patrons for all of your support. It is hugely appreciated. I do hope that all of you are having a great day wherever you are. Take really good care, and I will see you all again soon.